What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the weekly live stream from Scalar Learning, where we tackle Khan Academy SAT math problems every week, every Wednesday. Now, there's a new schedule that will be coming out in the next week or two. Just waiting on a few odds and ends. But the new YouTube schedule, of course, is going to continue these SAT Khan Academy problems. So don't worry about that. But we're going to be adding on some more stuff, some really cool stuff, which I'm really excited about. Probably going to be upping the output of videos quite a bit on the Scalar Learning channel. And we're going to have some regular times and dates. Now, the most important thing is that next week, next a week from Saturday, there is a new SAT that is being administered. Now, I'm taking that SAT, but more importantly, this weekend and next week, I will be doing some SAT cram sessions for you guys. So make sure to tune into those. I'm going to be posting the time shortly. So make sure you jump on those live streams if you're prepping for this upcoming October SAT or an SAT in the near future. It will be really helpful. All right, now let's jump into today's problem set here. SAT. We're going into linear inequality word problems. All right, let's do it. Now, I'm always seeing these problems for the first time, to the best of my knowledge, unless it's something that's been repeated. So the point is, I'm doing it live on camera so you can see how to deal with these problems in real time. You know, no, pre no prepping, no shenanigans. It's just this is the real deal. So let's do it. An insurance agent sells an insurance policy with an out-of-pocket maximum of 5000 Right off the bat, I'm thinking maybe maximum, something like this. Uh, we're talking about less than 5000 out-of-pocket expenses include any deductibles and co-insurance that the client pays beyond the normal monthly premium. He has a deductible of 250. This means that the client has to pay all of the first 250 of expenses insured by the policy. After that, the client has a 20% co-insurance, meaning that the client pays 20% of the insured expenses. Hold on, with an out-of-pocket maximum of 5,000. All right. And uh, 20, so 20%, meaning the client pays 20%, the insurance company pays the remainder. Which inequality represents how much the total insured expenses X could be if the client has not yet reached the out-of-pocket maximum? Okay, got it. All right, let's just back up on this for a second. So we're talking about 250 plus, okay, so we're talking about the this is the deductible this is what we're just paying this is actually these are real insurance terms we're paying 250 plus 20 percent of x okay and x is sorry not x the out-of-pocket maximum is 5,000 which means and the 20 percent of the insured expense so what i think it means is that the x value, sorry, 0.2 of the x value has to be less than 5,000, okay? Which means that x has to be less than, let's make sure I'm doing this correctly, 0.2, x has to be less than 25,000. Total insured expenses Wait a minute, 25,000. And then, so I'm just trying to figure this out here because if we do that, right, it looks like it should be less than 25,000, but we gotta take into account that deductible of 250. So first we're paying 250. Oh, okay, I see, I see. All right, never mind. So I think what they're trying to say, let me see if this is correct. I think actually I set this up incorrectly. I think it's more like 0.2x has to be less than, so 5,000, 25,000. Hmm. I'm a little confused because, see that 23,750, this is the only one that accounts for that 250, right? But why 24,000 and then subtract 250? So I got to think about this. Insurance agent sells an insurance policy with the out-of-pocket ma out maximum of 5,000. Out-of-pocket expenses include any deductibles. Oh, it includes deductibles and co-insurance. 
that the client pays beyond the normal monthly premium. Okay, so the client, so out of pocket expenses, and that's what we're talking about. So we, okay. The client has a deductible of 250. This means the client has to pay all the first 250 no matter what. After that, the client has a 20% co-insurance, meaning that, oh, I see. A co-insurance, meaning that the client pays 20,000 of the insured expenses and the total company pays the remainder. Okay, I think what I should have done is I should have actually set this entire inequality equal to 5,000, not 0.2 equal to that. So I think this was the correct setup here because now, now we're saying that whatever this is and this is less than 5,000. Um, let me just make sure that's right. So 0.2x of that, of the total. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. See, I think it's beyond this. Okay, now I think I get it. So it's 250, and then this is x minus 250, and then, then this is less than 5,000. This makes more sense because now we're talking about, we're paying 20% after that 250 is paid. Because it wouldn't make sense to pay 20% on that 250 again. So we're paying the deductible, 250 on the first expenses, and then this remainder, we're paying 20%, and we want this total to be 5, 000, less than 5,000. So now we're gonna subtract 250. Let's see if this works. I think this is, now we got it set up right. 0.2 times x minus 250 is less than 47.50. Now we're dividing by 0.2. Now dividing by 0.2 is actually the same. Oops. Hold on. It's a Conor McGregor uh, YouTube video started playing randomly. Okay, so we're dividing everything by 0.2. We divide by 0.2, it's actually like multiplying by five. Okay, so I can multiply this by five. We can't use a calculator, so it's 20,000, hold on, five, 20,000, 2350. Actually, let me just do it like this, four, seven. Five zero zero twenty five two thirty seven three twenty three, so then it's twenty three. So x minus two fifty is less than twenty three seven fifty, and then we add two fifty, add two fifty, and I think it's x is less than twenty four thousand. Yikes. Okay, so that was pretty tricky. Let's see if that's right. All right. Woo. That was that was pretty tough. At, at first, anyways, it got me got me thrown for a loop. So that is exactly right, right? How I set it up, 0.2 to x minus 250 plus 250. All right. Uh, just to tell you why I went back and reevaluated, just things weren't settling, things weren't making sense in my head. So that's, in, that's a real example of, hey, things, something doesn't look exactly right. Let me, let me dig a little deeper, let me reread the question, et cetera. These are pretty tough questions. Next, Joanna Richard volunteered at a hospital. Joanne volunteers four hours per week more than Richard. So Joanne volunteers four hours more per week than Richard. So we have Richard plus four. In a given week, they do not volunteer for more than a combined total of 16 hours. So less than 16. All of these have less than 16. If x is the number of hours that Richard volunteers, that's x, okay. Which inequality best models the situation? So it's x plus x plus 4, right? Because this is, because now Richard is x, j or Joanne is x plus 4, so I'm saying Richard plus Joanne is less than or equal to 16. So simplify this, add like terms, 2x plus 4 is less than or equal to 16. Right? I think that's, I think that's right. Okay, so this one was definitely much easier than the first. Let's try the next one, for me anyways. Mikhail has a summer project in which he must complete at least 35 hours, complete at least greater than or equal to 35 hours of community service. 
I'm assuming that A and C are out because they're not at least <clears throat> that is greater than or more than 35. So it's probably B or D. But I need to read the entire question to make sure. Each day that he goes to the park, he volunteers for seven hours. It takes him 1.5 hours to get to the park each way. Oh, yeah, seven times D. I see there's Ds here, so each day is seven hours per day. It takes him 1.5 hours to get to the park each way, which also counts towards his community service. So 1.5 each way, that's another three hours, again, per day. Which of the following inequalities can be used to find the number of days McCall must volunteer at the park to complete his project? And I think it's this, I think it's D. Because we're doing seven plus another three, so that's 10 per day. So we're talking about four days. So let's see if this is correct. Yes. Mobile internet access increased steadily in Europe between 2010 and 2015. In 2010, about 32% had mobile broadband. In 2015, the percentage had increased to 78%. If the rate of increase per year was constant during those years, in what year did broadband subscriptions first exceed 60%? Okay. So it's constant. So we have 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. So it's a jump. We got one jump, two jumps, three jumps, four jumps, five jumps. So that means we're talking about five jumps and an increase of 32 to 78. So that's an increase of 40, 46, which means if we divide this by five, we're talking, this is a calculator problem, but I think I can do it mentally, it's 9.2. So 9.2, 9.2, 9.2, 9.2, and 9.2, okay? And these five jumps will get us to 78% because five times 9.2 is 45 plus one, which is 46. So that, that seems to work out. Now, let's see where we're at. So in 2011, 32 plus 9.2 is 41.2. Again, we're jumping up another 9.2% here and we're talking about 50.4%. Here we're talking about 59.6%. And here we're talking about 2014, we hit 68.8%. Uh, okay. Now, it's saying it increased steadily. This is actually, you know what? See, now my thing is, if it's increasing steadily, that means every day it's increasing a little bit more. I actually think, hold on, let me think about this. And in 2015, it had increased to 78. Okay, so let's assume that this is the highest it hits in, thir in 2013. If that's the case, then the answer is 2014. So I say 2000, if this is like the beginning, or you know, the, the high, the, oh no. Hmm, see, this is tricky because, yeah. So let's assume that like in 2014, we start right at, 59.7 or something like that. that I kind of have to make that assumption that it's kind of starting off from here and then going to here by the end of 2014, which means that 2014 is where it exceeds 60. My only question is it could start at 32% in 2010 and move up. And by the end of 2010, it might be at 41.2%. Okay, so if I'm understanding that, if it's that way, then by the end of 2013, it's at like 68.7%, and then we're jumping to 68.8. So I'm not sure. It's not totally clear. Let's see if this is right. Yeah, see, it's 2013. So let me see exactly how they explain it. Yeah, so this is what I got, 46 divided by 5, which is 9.2. Um, three years. Yeah, see, it's a little bit over three years, at 3.04 years. So they're saying approximately 2013. See, I'm kinda, I was kind of looking at it. I feel like that's unclear, to be honest, but I'm, I was kind of looking. I was taking the assumption that 59.6 is where it maxes out in 2013, whereas they're looking at it, that's approximately three years, 
where it's going to exceed 60% about 3.04 years after, so in the year 2013. You know, it's kind of like they're kind of setting it at the beginning, like these numbers are hitting at the beginning of 2010, 2011. And that's where I feel like there's a bit of a discrepancy. I can't really tell, but that's how they're phrasing it. So I would go with the way that they interpret versus the way that I interpret it because these guys work with the test creators. So that was tough. Okay, next. Uh, question number five. The Zamboni is an ice resurfer invented by Frank Zamboni in 1949. Okay, the Zamboni takes 20 minutes to resurface an entire Olympic size skating ring. What is the minimum number of Zambonis working together at the same rate that could resurface an Olympic size skating ring in five minutes or less? Okay. So we're basically trying to get it down. So it says it takes 20 minutes for one. So theoretically, we should be, if we, if we have four, okay, it's essentially one fourth of the time. So if we have four Zambonis, and they all work at the same rate, right? One Zamboni could theoretically finish one in five minutes because five minutes is a quarter of 20 minutes, right? So one could do a quarter of the rink, all things being held equal in five minutes. So if we have four, we could do it in five minutes or less, but probably right at five minutes. So that's my thought, unless I'm missing something. Yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. Okay. All right, that's it for the Khan Academy questions, math questions for the SAT from Scale of Learning this week. Make sure to click the like button if you liked these videos, if you liked this video and found it helpful. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more, especially if you're prepping for your upcoming SAT. We've got a lot of good content coming out in the next few weeks, so make sure to check back regularly. Like I said, we got a new schedule coming out soon, a new math music video on the way shortly on logarithms, which I'm very excited about. And that's it. Take it easy.